Hello again and welcome to Just Saying. I'm Steve McFeeders along with Mike Jensen, publisher of the Standard Democrat, and we are here today to have a conversation with Mike and I. <laughs> and hopefully we can get your response uh, from this program because we have a very particular opportunity we want to talk about. Mike will set it up first by talking about some of the improvements in our community. We just did a program with Drew Juden. Right on the new t DPS building right, we're going right. to see going up before two months longer. Absolutely, yeah, look forward to it. There's going to be some dirt here real soon. We we can look out your front door and see the beautiful BMU building. Yes, indeed, yes. Which is serving a great purpose. We can go down the street by Malone Park, and the new housing authority uh, building is just beautiful. It is, it is. We're very proud of that. Other improvements that we talk about, if you drive out uh, by Missouri Delta Medical Center and you go back behind it there, the new orthopedic yes. uh, center is taking shape yes, and about very to much open. So. Uh, there's been several improvements in the area, and, and we could not uh, forget about the Minor Convention Center. Uh, the Minor Convention Center has been a home run. It has been. Uh, uh, it I won't say it's been a surprise because I think everyone recognized that there was a need for it mm -hmm. uh, and that it would fill a niche in our region, in our community, our expanded community. But I, uh, Home Run is a is perfect example. It has been. It's been very popular. It's been very well received. And it, they just started operation. Right. Uh, you give them a little bit of time and we'll all share a great de degree of pride in that facility. Yeah, their first event was in September of 2010. Mm -hmm. There have been uh, wedding receptions. The Board of Realtors had a very successful home and garden show, Cancer Society, Taste of Sykeston event, gospel concerts, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Christmas Eve service the Methodist Church put on. Mm -hmm. You go on and on and on, and it's, it's a real boon to the community because it is actually bringing people to the area. No question about it. And it's packed, it, it, it is packed that, that beautiful facility several times. And, and the point that you have driven home many, many times is, is that we all have to think in terms of regional concepts. Mm -hmm. and, and what is good for Minor is good for Sykes and yeah, vice absolutely. versa. Uh, and, and the convention center is actually in Minor, but believe me, uh, Sykes and residents should, and I believe they do, share in the same degree of pride in it. They do, and I, I'm very glad to see that because when the people uh, Sykes and Minor attend an event at that new convention center, they both take ownership and they both comment how beautiful that facility is. And, so and as well they should. And today, today we're going to talk a little bit about a uh, about an, uh, an opportunity, a project that's coming before the City Council this week. Uh, and it's the expansion, uh, major expansion, of the Malco Theater in Sykeston. Right. Uh, there's a proposal uh, that's been kind of in the background for quite a while and now it's, now it's, uh, it's up front. And that is to uh, expand the Malco from its 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 current opportunities to a sixplex, as I understand it, right. uh, uh, six theaters, which is something that uh, you know. I was thinking last night, Steve. You, you go back to uh, 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 I was fortunate enough to be on a, a committee in the late '80s in Sykeston, and another one in the mid '90s. We were trying to identify needs within the community. Mm -hmm. And it's that normal laundry list that every community looks at. Oh, you know, like opportun that. job opportunities sure. and and uh, and improvements in the hospital, this, that, and the other. But uh, a recurring theme in both of those studies was the need for additional entertainment outlets in right. Sykeston. And first and foremost being, now don't get me wrong, they mentioned skate parks and, and all of the other outlets, but an improved and expanded movie theater was right near the top of the list in both of those surveys. And then the one we have here has been here a long time. It Absolutely. hasn't been uh, remodeled in a long time. There's three, as you know, mm -hmm. and as I, what I've seen of the plans, this would be a sixplex, very modernized. Very much so. Very expanded, and I think it would take in the existing location and mm -hmm. next to it all the way to AutoZone. Yes. And it would be a very nice, beautiful place where people feel like they could maybe stay in Sykes and go to the movies instead of go to Cape Absolutely. or wherever. Absolutely. Uh, so we see the pluses of that. And as you pointed out, this has been an overriding theme for 25 years. For a long time, you're exactly but right. But there is a caveat with this, and That's it's right. a... Uh, CID. Yes. We might tell the folks what a CID is. A CID is kind of a new concept to me, and, and I think it's probably a new concept to our community, and it's a community improvement district. 
as I understand it, and, and, and let me say before we go any further, uh, Steve and I are by no means experts on this. No. Uh, I'm not an expert on anything by a wide margin, but uh, b by virtue of what we do, uh, you know, at least we ask some questions, and 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 maybe we have a little more information than some others. But as you pointed out earlier, one of the purposes of this program is to get input from the citizens of Sykeston. Mm -hmm. So if you have questions, you know, we really encourage you to to ask those questions, get them to us through our through our website, through speak out column in the newspaper, uh, uh, call us, write letters. We really need that in, that input, but a, a community back to the topic. I'm sorry, a community improvement district is a uh, is a geographic area where an additional tax is imposed on the customers of the businesses in that area, uh, and that tax uh, will go a long way toward paying for the bulk of this project. Now, the investors in the Malco also have skin in the game. I mean, they oh, also sure. uh, put up finances for this project. But as I understand, it's about a $2 million project. Mm -hmm. uh, there could be a tax up to a 1% sales tax. Uh, uh, that's the maximum allowed by state law. Uh, that could be levied on the businesses in that district, which would include um, uh, Dollar General Store, Food Giant, AutoZone, right. and, and a number of smaller merchants there. Uh, uh, we have two TIF districts in Sykeston, that's Tax Increment Financing District. Right, which is different. Which is different. Similar. Yeah, absolutely. Different. It, it's the philosophy that says uh, we in this geographic area will all contribute because we believe there's a benefit for us. Mm -hmm. So what the council will be looking at this week and in the weeks ahead is whether or not to establish this community improvement district to levy a tax for a specific period of time mm -hmm. to bring in revenue to help complete this project. And, and I think it's important to note that the project itself is not simply, not exclusively the construction of the theaters. Right. It's also improvements in the access to the parking lot, the parking lot itself, lighting, uh, the ambiance around absolutely. it. Absolutely, there are mm -hmm. a number of, of, of improvements that would be made to that uh, to that district that, in theory, would benefit all the merchants. And of course, uh, not in theory, but in fact, would benefit the community because, as you said, if we had this, uh, if we had a theater and uh, an improved theater, and we could capture. Uh, some of those moviegoers who are now going to Cape Girardeau, mm -hmm. uh, that's just a plus for our community. Absolutely. You have the pros, and you have the, <clears throat> excuse me, you have the cons. Pros are pretty obvious. Yes, yes. New, modernized, sixplex, Malco Theater that people hopefully would come to in greater numbers. The con, if you're a merchant in that area, right. people coming to that area are going to pay an extra penny Correct. on every dollar spent. That's correct. Yep. So, whereas now, as I understand it, um, take Food Giant. Okay. Food Giant in that, what we used to call the Midtown or right. Village, I don't know what we right. call it. Yes. Now, would have to, their sales tax would go up by a penny. Whereas right now they're a half penny below Walmart, Walmart. which is in New Madrid County, a half penny lower than Aldi's, mm -hmm. which is in New Madrid County. Correct. So this would make them a half penny higher. Right. Yes. So, so is that to their benefit, or is that to their detriment? And you know, the question then becomes: Is this project worth doing? And is this the fair method by which to do it? And it's a legitimate question. I think that's the. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I think that's a question that the city council is weighing right, right. now, and and you know as 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 we have talked and I've spoken with others, I have some philosophical differences. Mm -hmm. I truly do mm -hmm. with imposing a tax, and it's not on the businesses necessarily; it's on the customers on of the those people. businesses. Mm -hmm. I have a philosophical difference in opposition to imposing a tax on a business if they cannot see a direct benefit to their business. Right. Uh, the TIF district, for example, and by way of example, uh, that was used to establish uh, uh, Walgreens, uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, mm -hmm. that, that area. Mm -hmm. That 
was an obvious benefit for everyone in that area because it was an overall improvement. Now, this community improvement district, obviously, first and foremost, would would benefit the Malco more than anyone else. Sure, I mean, they're the beneficiary, and and some of the participating businesses, uh, uh, they would have to impose this tax. Mm -hmm. it, the the benefit to them, and it's a judgment call on their part. It's a judgment call on the city council's part as well. The the benefit to them would be the improvements in the overall district, the overall shopping experience, mm -hmm. uh, and the possibility and the potential that it would bring additional customers into their store. Right. Now, that's the argument that is being made in support of this. And the other improvements around that. Absolutely, area. yes. Right. Uh, and, and now, it, uh, and I can understand and I can accept uh, the opposition that some of these merchants would have. Mm -hmm. I, I, mm -hmm. can, yeah. I can see it. I, as I said, I have, some, I have some philosophical issues myself. The question becomes, will there be enough benefit uh, to those other merchants uh, for them to support uh, an additional tax for a period of time right. on their customers? And it is a defined period of time. Yes. yes Whenever the money's collected, yes. the debt's paid, it's done. Yes, yes. <clears throat> and and there's, there's some... Uh, you know, there's some math that said that that, that could be a 20-year issue. Right. Uh, there's other math that says it would probably be retired sooner than that. Mm -hmm. The other aspect of this is that with the improvement in that entire district, will that perhaps generate additional businesses wanting to locate in that area? Right. There, and there's some open space to the uh, east yes. of the Malco yes. complex where someone could come in and build. Correct. There's maybe a configuration in the parking lot where you could put something. Right. But the question then becomes, if you are sitting on the city council mm -hmm. and you're wanting your community to grow, right. and as I understand it, this is totally up to the, the council. Yes, and their yes, yes. So uh, the people who are wanting to uh, improve and expand the Malco will make the presentation you're probably going to have some merchants in that area that go, we don't think we should be paying for this improvement. Right, right. And then you're sitting on the city council and you have to vote yes or no. Which is yet another reason <clears throat> why you and I haven't run for the city, city council. council. <laughs> but we'd like to hear from you uh, what you think the right thing to do would be at this time. Uh, I think it's pretty simple. The Malco improvement through the CID, which is a penny tax, uh, imposed on those in that area for the greater good yes. of the area. Yes. So do you think this is something the council should vote for or should they vote against? Right. Some, you know, something that, now I don't want to get off on a tangent because our time's limited, uh, but, but something that has irked me, <clears throat> one of my favorite words, Irk? irked me through the years. You've never seen him irk. I'm, I'm, I'm an irk kind of guy. Yeah. Uh, is that this issue or other issues uh, believe me, they'll be discussed in the coffee shops. Yes. They'll be discussed in the country club. Mm -hmm. They'll be discussed in the barber shops and the beauty parlors and right. what have you. Sadly, that conversation is rarely expanded uh, and shared with members of the uh, city staff or the city council. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just kind of a bitch and moan session in a coffee shop. Right. And we air it and we voice our opposition or our support, and it dies there. And, th and that's sad because the community, the value of the community is, is uh, I mean, it's mirrored by the input of the citizens. And, uh, and this is one topic, as, as you pointed out, that could really use some citizen input. Uh, it's a slam dunk to say, gosh, we all want a new beautiful Malco sixplex and bring people to town and, yeah, and, and, and improve. So be proud of Absolutely, it. no yeah. question about it. But there's a cost component to it. Very much. And uh, we as customers will have to pay that cost component. Mm -hmm. It's minimal, but it, it still is a cost component. And the merchants uh, will be responsible for collecting that cost and, and then for passing that along. So it's... Um, yeah, and if you're sitting here too and uh, you're a food giant, food giant's corporate headquarters are here. Yes, absolutely. And look what they already put back in this community. No question about it. They're, so you, they're absolutely wonderful business partners. They are. And it's part of our community. It, I mean, it's, yep. Yep. So you have to consider all those things and would you vote yes yep. or would you vote no if you were sitting on that city council? And that's what we'd like to hear that's from exactly people. Because right. we'd like to be able to come back to you at the next show and say, 
X percent of you said yeah. You, yeah. This, this and X percent said that. That's right. So we're going to put the burden on you today. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, tell us what you think. Seriously, this, this is your community, this is the future of your community. Uh, this is a wonderful project. There's a cost component to it. So uh, uh, as we said at the start of the show, we'll repeat it. Uh, uh, take the time to either call speak out, to uh, email us, to contact our website. I mean, there, there are many, many ways that you can do it. And tell us what you think on it, because this is, uh, the, this is a good topic that, that would benefit from citizen input. Uh, so, so that's what we ask you today. Malco, yes or no? That's what it boils down to. We're waiting on you. Uh, we thank you for joining us this week, and we look forward to you joining us again next week for uh, uh, Steve McFeeders. My name's Mike Jensen, and uh, we thank you. We're just saying.